Python on hardware time, including CircuitPython, where it's code, plus communities. So Lots we happened. are um, up to 6.0 Six release. Release. And uh, one Wait, thing. Wait, is it the beta? Is it the release candidate? No, it's released. Oh my goodness, it's actually released. Yeah. Happy and birthday. So congrats to the entire team, um, Scott, who leads that up. And uh, one of the things that Scott said on the show and tell was we were up to 2,000. Um, pull requests. That's right. That 2001 pull requests closed today. Closed. And that's yeah. a big deal. Big deal. And we have like 30 open. We have a lot more contributions coming. These are, you know, a lot of these are pull requests from within the community, um, people who work on Adafruit, uh, Adafruit Circuit Python core. But lately we've been getting contributions from other people, boards they want to add, functionality that they've worked on, improvements, bug fixes. Yeah. It's really awesome to see that we, you know, we, we pushed... Circuit Python up to version like six, but it's starting to get momentum from other people as well who want to, to contribute to it. And I think that's because we have a great community. We've got um, great support. Um, we've got good hardware and, and debugging capabilities to, to test your designs with. And um, we want to do a really good job. We want to have a consistent experience across all the different chipsets and boards that people can come up with. So very awesome to see we have yeah, like good milestone. six chipsets and and version six uh in this week's newsletter we have a few things going on i wanted to point out i was reading this right before the show um so of course um our new product that you probably saw on show and tell and a lot of the um videos and projects that we've been doing is magtag um it's one of the i think easiest best python powered devices that you can do cool iot things with and of course it's well, it's a new chipset. It's the new ESP32 yeah. S2. This is one of the first boards that uses it, not just as a dev board, but actually, you know, using it as as a product design. And um, it's it's been fun and interesting to to play with this new chip, but it works quite well. You know, I'm having a really good time making. It's neat to have projects. it all in one. It's like, nice. Yeah, yes, it it's neat. all in one. It's very fast. Um, and then you know, if if there was like a TMZ, if there was like celebrity news for um, electronics and Python, well, this would be it. So uh, Guido is the founder, the creator of the Python programming language. And he retired. And I remember when he retired, it was like, oh, man, you know, that's kind of cool. And, you know, we're on his Instagram and, like, we've, like, tweeted back and forth. And, you know, he's one of the thoughtful uh, entities behind something that's so important to so many people. And then he announced, um, and I'll just read it, I decided that retirement was boring and I've joined the developer division at Microsoft. To do what? Too many options to say, but I'll be using Python. Uh, I'll make using Python better for sure, and not just on Windows. There's lots of open source here. Watch this space. So we tweeted back. We're like, yay, Python on hardware. And he said, uh, I love that little board. Yay. And that's always good to see because it's like it's it's like a dad saying, good job, son. Uh, so <laughs> oh, I'm so proud of you. This is the love that your father never gave you. Yeah, and so that's why it's just like, notice me. Yeah, so... Uh, this is really neat, and I'm excited about this because um, when you have the founder of a language in the group that has VS Code, that has GitHub, and uh, Microsoft uh, fully embraced open source, they are they're living it. Um, they they have some of the the best resources out there, and they really commit to the things that they say they're going to do. Make code. They did open source, and we work with them, um, and we like them, and um, I'm excited. So, anyways, that's my celebrity gossip. Um, Scott will have deep dive. <laughs> well, it is it's like a celebrity. No, it's great news. Much. You know what? I, I'll say something. You know, Microsoft is one of the few companies that they have a ton of money and they'll use it to pay people who do good stuff to do good stuff. Yeah. And I really, I really like that. They've they've shown that they are uh, very respectful to properties that they take over, like GitHub, as well as people that they pay to do work, like Guido. Um, Circuit Python deep dive with Scott. That'll be tomorrow. I think Scott's doing that tomorrow. And then some Adafruit updates. We have our 20% um, off. We already mentioned that during the show. I thought this was really neat. This That's was, cool. This That's is really, so hypercardy. Th yeah. So we, we made something called Hypercard, and it's uh, very Hypercard-like, and it's uh, Python Your Own Adventure, um, if you want to make something like that, where you um, figure out your path, and then you click through, and it you know goes to these different options in a story. And you can do that all with the PyPortal and with Python. Um, this is a really neat um, Star Trek. El Carzi clock. Yeah, really neat Star Trek clock that uh, Cedar Grove did, and it uses CircuitPython and Adafruit IO. You can check out some CircuitPython DC motor controls, countdown mm. timer for days till Christmas. Well, that's a nice countdown. Yeah, you can uh, 
we'll get this word clock. This was made with the 64 by 32 LGB, uh, LED RGB LED matrix display. And then um, the other thing I wanted to mention, um, the uh, ARM, the folks at ARM, they're funding the Python Blocks project. And this is, Yay! yeah, so this is um, with the uh, uh, Microbot project. And I, I have a link to it on Twitter if you check it out. Yeah. Um, and then uh, two other things. Uh, the collection of tiny Python on hardware. I thought I got them all, but then someone tweeted like, don't forget Python for Nokia S60. I'm like, like what? Oh, <laughs> okay. So uh, we updated our blog post and then um, it was originally based on Python 2.2.2 back in 2002. It's so rad. And uh, there it was. <laughs> Python wanted to be on hardware. And then uh, last up, um, Open Source Hardware Association announced that they are having their event. It's going to be virtual and it is next year, and we have it, so you can make a countdown clock or whatever, but it'll be Friday, April 9th, 2021. Okay. All right. Um, and then I guess one thing that I wanted to do before we get out of Python on hardware news is uh, the new guide that just went up, um, which circuit Python board for you. Take a look at it. It's a big deal because we always get asked, this hey, was written, I wrote what a, board? Katni wrote a huge amount of it, got some help from Carter, who does a lot of forum work, got help from Scott, who's the core developer of CircuitPython. I also looked at it and looked at it. Um, if you're like, I want to use CircuitPython, but there's too many options. How do I know what to pick? It's it's a common thing. People people like you're just like, I don't know which board to pick because there's yeah. so many. We try to divide this guide up into common topics. Um, it's a live guide, which means that we're going to continue adding to it. So if you have suggestions, post them up in the CircuitPython Discord. We also have our monthly, uh, sorry, our weekly Monday meeting for CircuitPython, um, 2 p.m. Eastern. Check your local time listing for when that is. Um, bring up any other topics or boards that you want to have added to that guide, and uh, yeah. we'll get to it next time we sweep through the guide. And that's Python on Hardware News this week. Blinka, blinka, blinka.